Welcome back to the One Infinite Channel. In our last video, we shared evidence from Gurbani proving that Kirt is not recommended by Gurmat. In this video, we shall share Gurmat's alternative, one that, if practiced, will make a meaningful difference in the quality of our life and lead us down this road less traveled, the Nyara Pant, to which all the Pagats have testified in Gurkha Shabad, in what we call Gurbani. So here is our agenda for this video. We will start by recapping Kirt and its futility, and then we will offer an approach recommended by Gurbani, and as a last video, we will do so not by opinion, but by offering you proof from within Gurbani. And that will lead us to establish the Gurmat alternative to Kirt. Also, as last time, if this piques your interest, please begin your own research of Gurbani and within Gurbani from Gurbani. And if you already have been doing that, take the opportunity to go deeper. Prove to yourself that what we have found is indeed true. And if not, why not? Help us in spreading the word and also in correcting any deficiencies that we may have gotten to and made inadvertently. And on with this, see your life elevate to a different level. What we talked about last time is Gurbani is not recommended because what we have been looking to are sources that are inimical to the one and to oneness. And we proved that by referring to a couple of the power structures that have led us down this road. Um, but we would also like to address a likely question that came to some people's minds, and we know because some of you mentioned this, is that are we suggesting that honesty and hard work are not recommended by Gurbani? Because that is how um, a lot of these sources, the quote-unquote sick sources, are saying that's what Kirt means, is honesty and hard work. Well, um, of course not. That is not what we are showing. Is there any spiritual or even religious path in the world that says we should be lazy and dishonest? Of course, <laughs> with the exception of some people's interpretation that the Gita tells them that all is fair in business, even dishonesty. Well, let's put that aside. But no, that is not what we are saying. You see, honesty and hard work are the minimal expectations. They are part of a moral structure that itself is found within Satogun, which is one of three qualities of Maya. And they have been referred to the, the Triguni Maya, the Rajo, Tamo, and Sato. Well, by the way, the Satogun also includes charity work and helping others, which are all good things. They are beneficial. It's not that we are not to engage in those things. But really, if Gurbani were just recommending all this, then is there a qualitative difference between Gurmat and much of what came before it? What is that difference? Well, the problem is that those who have interpreted the Mat of Gur in such a superficial and shallow way for us have not really differentiated why and how Gurmat is so complete in its wisdom. Because they're basically saying that whatever was coming before, let's just repackage that and present it. And no, Gur Gurmat is much more than that. There is a qualitative difference. There is a quantum leap of a difference. Gurmat shows us how to be in the manifest world where most are caught within Maya, the structure of duality, which is poisonous. But it also has the potential for vibrance and splendor. This is what Guru Amar Das meant when he said, e sansar tum dekde, e harka roop hai, hari roop aya. If only we had the internal eyes, the wisdom 
and the vision to see this. So last time we discussed the three forms of gift. So now we're going to put them all together. And remember, we everything we shared is from Gurbani, from within Gurbani, and we have attempted to contextualize it in a way that gives us a clear picture that can inform our actions and our morality. We need to stop taking guidance from superficial, from kacche, the known ways. If we wish to get gurmat, then we need to step into the unknown, and that is the sphere of learning from the spiritually consistent wisdom to which Gurbani and the Pagat whose witness is within Gurbani, that Gurka Shabad itself attests. That is what we need to do. So, in putting all of this together, the easiest way for you to confirm is to look at the hallmarks of life of Kirt, as shown by Gurbani, and see whether they ring true for your own life and to the life of others around you. What about the result of a life of kirt, as understood through Gurbani? Is that also true? If yes, then we are right to suspect that kirt is not the way. So let's quickly look at that. What are the hallmarks of a life of kirt? Well, it's a consistent pattern of missing the mark, which is pop. Is that something we see happen in our life? Are we suffering due to our never-ending desires? Are we ego-driven? Are we drowning in our greed and self-centeredness? Are we driven to consume, even at the cost of our own well-being? Are our efforts focused on everything but being vibrant and integrated in Harika Nam? Are our efforts, and, and what we are getting out of these efforts, only to sustain that which cannot be sustained, something that will fall apart, it will die, it is temporary. Are we inconsistent in our being? Are we, do we have a lot of complaints? Are we engaged in a lot of quote-unquote ardas to buy something from this one? Are we asking others to do our ardas, ardas? Are we overly focused and attached to quote-unquote relatives and our family, the bodily relations? Do we have demands and are we engaged in vapar with the one, with God, with the higher power? And as a result, do we find that suffering is our hab habitual and guaranteed way of life? And, and really, are we on our way to waste this invaluable opportunity? If that is the case, then we have been engaged in the wrong way of being. And Gurbani calls that gift. And we are telling everyone and ourselves that the way to live in this world is to engage in gift. And we are saying that that is one of the pillars of Sikhi. Please, that is not the case. Who is engaged in gift, according to Gurbani? Now, we consider ourselves high and better. But Gurbani is saying it is the ignorant and the foolish, the manmukha, the gavar, the sakka, the mood, the pashu, the animals, andule, the blind, blind to spiritual wisdom, those who have lost their way, those who are constantly running after the short-lived things, to the shiny, to the allure of the ephemeral, and those who are plagued by insecurities. They who are disunited due to their way of being, due to their habits of being, due to their propensities. And how, what is a space within which these people who engage in kir, that they operate, that they live in, in a life of darkness, in a life of ignorance. They are attached to the temporary. They are caught in this vicious cycle and they are unmindful of the body's impermanence that which they think is important, all important to their loved ones, that are all important. Our mo, our attachment is to all of these things, 
that will be gone. And, and this cycle just repeats. So it's this rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that we are stubbornly committed to the wrong way, to our folly. And we are anchored by prior ways of doing and prior ways of being. We are not stepping into the unknown. We continue to justify what we already know, and we have a lot of complaints. But the problem is that the cause and effect are guaranteed. We will get what we sow. We will get the results of that. There's no way to get around that. And we are well-practiced, constantly missing the mark. But we keep justifying all our errors of the past. And we are mentally misaligned with Hukam. Now you see, in fact, we really ha are all within Hukam. Hukam and Dar Sabako. Bar Hukam Nakoi. But mentally, we do our best to resist it. And it, there are certain constraints within which we operate, but mentally we are attempting to go against it. And that is why we continue to suffer. Because I see Hukam Bujiani, we have not unraveled, we have not gotten, we, it hasn't fit together for us. And we are focused on everything but our own man. And as P.J. Pasha, Guru Mardas, defined for us the problem, the choices, and the battlefield. What is the problem? That we are stubbornly committed to known ways. And what are the choices? We have two clear choices. Either we can go the inner way, or we can go the way of the material. And they will both bear fruit. And then the man is direct, and the man is to do this, right? In or, or outward. And man is to be directed by the good, which measures itself against the universal wisdom and by the universal wisdom. And that is the battlefield. Man is the appropriate focus of all our efforts. Our struggles and negotiations are with our man. And we have to ensure that it is aligned with truth. Man will develop a taste for this type of life. And then it returns for a sustenance in conscious being. And thus guided, it will find the actions to be fruitful and rewarding in a way that is sustainable. And that is what is before us. These two directions. Live, taat, doera. Live, which is the internal and ta, which is a substantive and the material. And we will get what we get because hukami kaar kamai. Gurmukhi, apna man marya, shabdi kasvatti lai. And that is exactly what we just referred to when we said that we will get the results of those efforts and our choice is to be conscious and choose actions that will get, get us results that are fruitful and sustainable. So, which actions are fruitful? Good to know that. But as we do that, uh, we have a caution for you. Um, the effort here is to get the essence of Gurmat. It is not for us to provide you with another fake proxy. We don't want to replace Kirt with just another word that, that our thrust of our actions and our being, our way of life, does not change. But we just give you a different word. And then people go, well, kirt ni karni, but asi kuch hor kar diya. Just don't, do not substitute a different word because the word will make no difference. It is what the word represents. The reason kirt is not recommended by Gurbani is because of what it represents. By the way, it's action. Kirt is a deed. A deed could be good or bad. That is correct. But the overwhelming focus of kirt that occurs in Gurbani is that it is attached to a mindset that is attached with maya, to the ephemeral, to the transitory, to the temporary, to the superficial. That's the problem. So the effort here is not to simply to give you a different word to which to be attached. It is to change the entire mindset that goes with it. And so which actions are fruitful? Gurbani says, Prabhki ekirt, the ones that are consistent with the moon with the larger self from which we, the idea of I, came. Harichet, mindfully growing and vibrant. Those actions are fruitful. The ones that are drawn 
through vibrance and growth. The gains from these efforts are resonant with and not in struggle with the structure for being. And that's the hukam. It is our kar kamai, the, the deeds that we are engaged in, in earning the fruits of, that engage in alignment within hukam, not resisting it. And Guru Prasadhi Manjana, explore my man, guided by the wisdom of the pagat, which is the good, and to remain focused internally and challenging myself towards being vibrant and growing. And also acknowledging that these actions that provide me with the freedom to grow and to be free, it is to be free of image management. That is why I, as a human being, am a fool. And so are you, if you are engaged. Hari ma murak, Gurbani says. Hari naam chadara. Because I am engaged in managing in, this, in a futile way this image that I have of, of being somehow perfect or whatever it is. To whatever your image is that you show to the world, the face that you wear for the world, your persona, which by the way comes from Latin and it means an actor's mask. So whatever mask that you wear to show people that that is who you are, that is your image management. And most of our actions and our anger and all our reactions come from managing that image, which is fake. Because we are not even looking inwards to our mool, which is our source. So the actions that are fruitful, Gurbani continues, again, mindful of the structure and constraints that free me to live masterfully and to enjoy the fruits of life-giving actions that are sustained by virtues that reflect integrity, which are the eight qualities of the mool, which is uankar, satnam, karta puruk, nirpaho, nirvair, akal murat, ajunni, and swapang. Those are the qualities that I, that bring me to integrity, to being whole and complete when I unite with my mool, which is what is called job in Gurbani. Gurmukhi apna man maria, dying to the desires of the outwardly focused man and measuring against the standards of universal wisdom, which is the shardi, and that is the kasavakti. So, harika pana manneya, those that emerge from a sense of acceptance, not struggle against these challenges, live a life that is recommended for humanity, which is bhakti. According to Gurbani, that is the way to be for human beings. So, in our next part, part two, we will look at the terminology that Gurbani use, uses to recommend this life. And we hope that you will watch and that you will engage. And we look forward to your feedback and to improving upon this if needed and as needed. Thank you very much. Vahiruji ka khalsa. Vahiruji ki hateh.